morning everyone and welcome to this marketplace session focusing on food and agriculture. Initially we had two sessions planned for this marketplace but unfortunately our second speaker and um, prior on organic for climate has sent her apologies. So we'll just be focusing on geo foods. Um, just to say this is a subject quite close to my own heart um, in terms of agriculture and sustainable agriculture in particular. Um, the speaker geo food Sarah Gentinali is from the University of Turin and manages the Magma's UNESCO's Global Geopark in Norway. Um, in 2015, Magma UNESCO um, had the idea to start to work on defining a common criteria for local food enterprises. And Magma established the Geo Food brand, which is now used in 22 territories, recognizes UNESCO Global Geoparks. Geo Food has developed specific values and rules of conduct, which are expressed in its manifesto. And we'll hear more now from Sara Gentilini. Hello, Sara. Nice to see you. Hello. Good morning. Nice to see you too. Um, thank you very much. Um, I myself and Magma UNESCO Global Geopark are very, very pleased to be uh, present at this wonderful event and uh, speaking about sustainability and uh, UNESCO Global Geopark. Right. I'm going to take myself off now and the present. I'm afraid I lost you. You need to present now. Oh, okay, excuse so, me. We'll hand it across to you now. You're ready to go. What's the problem with the line? Okay, so good morning again. My name is Sara Gentilini, and I'm going to present you Geofood and the contribution to United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. As uh, Ian said before, I am project manager in Magma UNESCO Global Geopark in Norway. Uh, Magma UNESCO Global Geopark is a wonderful territory located southwest of Norway, close to Stavanger. Uh, it's kilometer square in involving five municipalities, Egerzul, Lund, Flakifjord, Sokendal and Bjerkrim. Uh, we have a five inhabitants per kilometer square. And uh, in 2019, we have a revenue of tourists of 180,000. And I have to say that in 2020, the tourism were even uh, growing, mostly uh, due to COVID, where uh, uh, Norwegian, uh, Norwegian uh, tourism. Uh, after, uh, from 2010, after we established the, the Geopark, uh, we had a tourist increase of 30% in the area. Uh, and um, more, we run more than 20 international projects, uh, mainly focused on sustainable tourism, culture, food and research. Uh, of course, I, I need to say a little bit what is our UNESCO Global Geopark. So uh, the International Geoscience and Geopark Program has been established by UNESCO in 2015. The program merged together the International Geoscience Program that it has been run since 1972. And it has harnessed the intellectual capacity of the worldwide network of geosciences, basically focusing on responsible and environmental resource extraction, natural hazard resiliences and uh, the adaptability of the area in the climate change. Uh, and the UNESCO Global Geopark, and that are laboratories for sustainable development, which promote the recognition and the management of Earth heritage and the sustainability of local communities. Uh, but what are exactly UNESCO Global Geopark? Uh, in June 2021, there are 164 UNESCO Global Geopark territories in 44 countries around the world. They are single unified geographical area where site and landscape are have international geological significance are managed in a sust sustainable and holistic approach focusing on education and sustainable development. So sustainable development is one of the main focus for UNESCO Global Geopark. Um, of course, uh, we can take many definitions of sustainable development, but one specific definition it aims to see the overall goal of sustainable development as a long-term stability for the economy and the environment. Uh, it is very important also to focus on the intergenerational equity, the concept of conserving the capital resources for future generations, recognizing the long-term scale of sustainability in order to address the need of future generations. Uh, and uh, again, a very important uh, uh, step <laughs> to the real sustainable development is the integration and acknowledgement of economic, environmental, and societal concerns through the decision making process, which must be a nation of fragmentation of institutional governments. Uh, geopark and sustainability. Of course, uh, 
let's say, taking in consideration what I just said, the GeoPark contribute to the long-term stability of the economy through geotourism support uh, activities to local enterprises, uh, thanks to nature cultural based development project, we generate direct and indirect income for the inhabitants and the territories. And uh, furthermore, the inter intergenerational equity and long term stability of the environment is guaranteed within the geopark, thanks to their long term stability of uh, uh, strategy of preserving the environment and the heritage for future generations. Um, I have to say that geofood. Uh, uh, I will introduce GeoFood later, but uh, since we are speaking about United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, I like to point out that GeoFood is an initiative uh, born within, in the frame of UNESCO Global Geopark, that focusing on uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, basically uh, taking into consideration four of those. The goal number eight, which is focusing on the promotion of sustainable local economy development. In fact, uh, as I said, through sustainable geotourism, which is one of the key pillars of UNESCO Global Geopark, we create job opportunities for the local communities. And uh, we also promote local culture and products. The goal 12, uh, that is uh, focusing on ensuring sustainable consumption and production patterns. So basically UNESCO Global Geopark educate and create awareness on sustainable development lifestyle. And that's also what uh, the GeoFood initiative and brand aim to do, as we will see later. The goal 13, it take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. All UNESCO Global Geopark hold the record of past climate change, and uh, we are educators on current climate change issues. And uh, uh, the climate change issues is one of the main, uh, uh, main focus of the GeoFood initiatives, again. And of course, the goal 17, which is uh, strengthen the means of implementation and networking activity, which is the core uh, of UNESCO Global Geopark and the core of GeoFood. But what is GeoFood exactly? GeoFood is the, is the Magma Geopark brand uh, only for UNESCO Global Geoparks. Uh, the three main aim of GeoFood are to promote uh, the geodiversity, the product and the producer and the restaurant within a UNESCO Global Geopark. We like to boost local food economy experiences like a unique exclusive travel offer, like the so-called authentic experiential tourism. And we want to increase the citizen awareness about the geopar values, the environmental issues, and the geodiversity. As I said, the GeoFood brand is only for UNESCO global ge ge territories. Uh, the local origin of the raw material uh, defined by the criteria and the manifesto has to come within the border of UNESCO global geopark. The menu served in the GeoFood uh, certified restaurant should contain uh, not less than 50% of local products and should be seasonal. The storytelling is, uh, is also core of the GeoFood. So the information about the raw material, the connection with the environment, the connection with the geological and cultural heritage and the local traditions must be displayed on the menu and the local product. Uh, because we like to create a strong connection with the local heritage. We like to engage local communities even more into the, uh, what, what is the core of, of an UNESCO Global Geopark where they're living in. Together, actually, we try to write the story of Geopark's local food worldwide. Uh, the storytelling is, it is uh, fundamental for the GeoFood. Uh, of course, it, it gets together with the landscape interpretation. The, we collect in knowledge from the local communities, uh, knowledge about their past, uh, knowledge about uh, uh, the traditions, knowledge about uh, intangible and tangible heritage. And of course, we also collecting uh, knowledge, process technique and the conservation methods link with the uh, local food product. Uh, at the moment, we are 27 member. Uh, we were 22 when I just uh, inscribed myself uh, to this uh, wonderful event. But uh, from then, we, we, the network is growing. And um, as I said, we operate into the frame of UNESCO Global Geopark. Uh, so far, we have 44 restaurants and 60 producers certified all around the world, from uh, Korea to, uh, <laughs> to Canada, passing uh, South America and uh, uh, Iran, uh, Malaysia, and Europe. Uh, there are three main fields of actions that can be detected within the GeoFood initiative. The first is the tourism and promotion. 
of environmental friendly local food and tradition. The second is education, the geopolitics and sustainability. The third is research and innovation. We like to boost the brand. We are making and developing new strategies and strengthen the networking. The tourism and promotion, it comes rather natural because we like to uh, underline the peculiarities of each territory and link them together and make uh, the geopark a reason to go and a reason to stay, focusing on local food traditions. So actually the manifesto and the criteria for local food enterprises has been translated in 14 languages and uh, we are operating a constant promotion of territories uh, with the Aztec taste geoparks and we aim at telling local stories that make uh, tourists come. Uh, these are some examples uh, from uh, my geopark, so Maguinesco Global Geopark is working uh, uh, at the moment with uh, uh, 12 local food producers and restaurants. We are creating this uh, uh, local food network. In the near future, we are uh, working on uh, making a food trail that connects these uh, local producer and the restaurant to each other uh, through storytelling and through uh, local, authentic, environmental, sustainable product. Uh, we have five, uh, all the fifth uh, Portuguese geopark are now using the brand and uh, they are promoting together with the Portuguese Tourist Board that decided to uh, boost the brand and make it uh, uh, one of the national brand for uh, tourism in Portugal. And in uh, not so long time, hopefully, we will have all the fifth uh, UNESCO Global Geopark, including Azore Island, connecting with each other through an amazing uh, uh, food trail that uh, tells the story of uh, this wonderful uh, land. In, uh, in uh, South Korea, Mudeon Sang UNESCO Global Geopark is linking the history of the sacred mountain uh, Mudeon Sang with the local people that for centuries and millennia are using the raw material coming from the mountain. And uh, the Geopark is, is promoting this um, the valorization of local product and storytelling, uh, developing uh, specific um, tourist packages. Viluercas, UNESCO Global Geopark from Spain, of course, is valorizing uh, the amazing uh, olive oil that uh, they have uh, uh, since millennia. And they tell the story of this olive oil and the cooperative in a specific leaflet or in the web page, and also combining the product on, uh, on menu that are served in the geofood restaurant. In Italy, the Tosca Mani UNESCO Global Geopark is now preparing more than 80 local companies, they are certifying from the farm to the fork. That means that they crush the grain, they create flour, and then the, they, they make pasta and bread, and they sell it uh, within the UNESCO Global Geopark, but also uh, outside, uh, uh, all around Tuscany. Uh, Rukwa in Finland is producing bread and is also certifying other products. And uh, this bread is now uh, sold also outside the geopark, branding the area and uh, telling the story of this amazing place also outside the border of the geopark. Uh, another important point is educational point. Uh, we like, as I said, the sustainable development is the pillar of the geofood. Why? Because we want to promote biodiversity and the improvement of the soil quality through the adoption of responsible, sustainable farming practices. And uh, on doing that, we also like to uh, boost the awareness of local communities and kids and uh, go into the schools and, uh, uh, let's say, share the idea of the importance of kilometre zero food and uh, agriculture that uses less pesticide as possible in the respect of biodiversity and uh, the short food chain how the short food chain can contribute to a substantial reduction of, re reduction of CO2 emissions all around the globe. Uh, at the moment, UNESCO Global Geopark are covering the surface of Finland uh, globally. So I was thinking, yes, if each of us adopt this brand, we can really have an impact on the climate change in the world. Uh, we develop educational material uh, relating with sustainable development goal in several languages. Here, uh, my colleagues from Portugal develop uh, the, um, the leaflet in Portuguese. Of course, we have it in English and Norwegian, and we have it in Korean. And all the other nations are translating uh, the same in order to um, engage the schools and the teachers into this uh, uh, travel. Uh, the research project is, has been awarded recently by the UNESCO International Geoscience Pro Program as one of the best projects uh, received in 2021, we get special award. We are 43 individual partners from 26 countries. 
And uh, of course, all the 27 UNESCO Global Geopark, uh, uh, which are also GeoFood member, are participating to the to the research, but also territories that are not geopark, that aspire to be geopark. And uh, most of all, we have more than seven uh, institutes all around uh, the world that support us uh, to make uh, research around the brand. To, to we, we aim at working on gathering data, mapping the resources, and uh, as I said, creating research uh, um, start, start uh, background uh, for new improvement of, of the um, new methodologies, creating uh, tools for, uh, um, uh, let's say, supporting territories into in, for engaging local communities through food, uh, not necessarily only geopark. We like to use uh, the food network as a way to boost uh, uh, local economy and to maybe uh, support in this territory to become UNESCO Global Geopark. So we will develop leaflet, training courses, videos, and uh, a new web page, a new web page that it will include all the five main pillars of GeoFood uh, that are uh, basically the concept, the education, the science, the, the tourist part, and the footprint and environmental part. We are also promoting each other very much on social media. Uh, I invite you to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, in, in, uh, uh, we are also on LinkedIn or Twitter. And of course, uh, we promote the local stories and we promote the, the importance of uh, uh, keeping the old uh, traditions alive and uh, uh, boosting economy that, as we said, and uh, we see also uh, during the pandemic, uh, local food, uh, it has been uh, a very big, um, it has acquired even more value uh, because of the, 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 the problem to, uh, get, uh, let's say, food from outside our regions. So thank you for your attentions. These are my contacts. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you need any clarification and follow us. And thank you very much. Thank you. That was very, very, very interesting, Sarah. I work in the agricultural sector and I've not really heard of geoparks before from a food perspective. So thank you very much for that. Um, there's been really good questions that have come up. Um, a couple of statements. Um, we've had someone saying it is a beautiful initiative, and um, I totally agree with that. So, well done with that. Um, I think you've already answered this question, but I'm just going to ask it anyway. Um, is does GeoFood get transported outside of the GeoPark boundaries to supply surrounding areas, or do you just solely focus it within the park? No, we we the producer are allowed to transport it outside. Of course, we. We try to we try to encourage, uh, um, let's say, a sustainable transport uh, as much as possible. Uh, but very often, geoparks are in rural areas that are quite remote. But of course, all our members are aware of the sustainability side, and then they, they try also to transport with train or uh, or. Uh, but the main core of selling the food is is happening inside the uh, inside the geopark where the food are. Uh, basically produced. So that's the whole idea. Thank you. Thank you. Um, secondly, how do we spread the success of the geopark? So what are the opportunities to maybe link with other non-geopark initiatives? Is that something that you're looking at? Yes, we are. Uh, actually, we are receiving a lot of attentions from territories that are maybe natural park, uh, with a special, uh, I have to say that in order to become UNESCO Global Geopark, uh, a territory must prove to have a, a distinct and uh, international importance geological heritage uh, and working with the bottom-up approach with local communities. So um, we receive uh, interesting, uh, interesting from all around the world, from territories that are not UNESCO Global Geopark, but they wish to use geofood. So what we are doing is in a way to mentor them um, uh, collecting local communities because this uh, engagement, this bottom-up approach it is fundamental to become UNESCO Global Geopark independently of the use of the brand. So the GeoFood uh, idea and methodology, and we will use it even more when this project uh, uh, will get the first result at the end of this year or maybe next year. Um, and we, we provide them with tools uh, to, to make them uh, uh, creating geo products and to engage local communities. So actually we are using, uh, using GeoFood on the opposite way. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, 
And again, how do you or do you engage with hard to reach? You've spoken about the, the parks tend to be um, in kind of um, remote areas. Here in Cornwall, our geoparks are in a very deprived area. Are you able to engage with the local communities that are maybe in food poverty? How do they benefit? Yeah, how we do is Magma Geopark is uh, signing an agreement with the, with the local community, of course. And then we are in contact, uh, constant contact with the managers of the Geopark. And they Geopark, because they become UNESCO Global Geopark, they already have a very strong link. For instance, yesterday evening, I was talking with Mixteca Alta in Mexico, which is not a geofood partner yet, but they are working with the um, the local indigenous people, which are member of the board of the UNESCO Global Geopark. So they are actively uh, engaged in all kinds of activities and in all kinds of decisions. So before they, they will adopt the brand, they will, of course, have some meetings and some uh, interviews with the locals and with the local community uh, in order to see if that's something that can fit their uh, their uh, their ideas so the, the the engagement of local communities is uh, it is really the core of the initiative brilliant thank you um, another question that's come up essentially is in terms of looking at good farming practices do you have any kind of data or criteria that you insist people meet or is it something that you try to help or encourage people to improve as they move within the the geopark system no we have um, when uh, when a unesco global geopark signed an agreement with magma geopark they have to sign uh, under our manifesto i didn't took the time to go into detail to the manifesto but you can find it in the geofood page it's translated in 14 languages as i said the manifesto is basically express our values which are based on the strategy of Euro the european strategy from farm to fork and uh, on the united nations sustainable development goal as much as possible so basically what they they need to commit to that manifesto so it's not enough that the raw material is coming from the unesco global geopark area but has to be sustainable produced we also want them to commit to the reducing the packaging as much as possible using sustainable packaging like also to focus on uh, um, sustainability also of the workers which work into the into the farm or into the into the restaurant uh, it means that they need to have a proper contract that they need to be uh, have uh, the rights uh, respected and that can be rather um, rather obvious maybe in some area of europe but it's not obvious all around the world so the sustainability of uh, people it goes uh, together with the sustainability for the environment so we try to um, we try to, to encourage all of them to, to work in that way. Brilliant, thank you for that. Over here, we're looking very much at something called a regenerative and restorative um, agricultural system. Um, again, where we're looking at soil health, carbon in soils, biodiversity. Um, is that something that you see the um, geo food side actually adapting maybe as it moves through or is that something you think might be a little bit too prescriptive for the for the growers specifically no it's it is exactly the direction where we are going through this um, international research that we are running with seven eight universities and a lot of scientists we are collecting informations from uh, um, each participant relating with food with the uh, but of course with soil with biodiversity and uh, Collecting this kind of uh, data that already existing uh, will allow us to have a database and we will uh, increase our knowledge on what is already happening in these areas. And starting from them, we, from that, we would like to exploit further the, uh, the, the several aspects that are linked, as you said, with the food and soil and the health and the, uh, pesticide and fertilizers and everything that going around organic agriculture, even though uh, geofood cannot really be a certification uh, that guarantee uh, organic agriculture, we encourage as much as possible organic agriculture. So I hope I answered to your question. Yeah, thank you very much. And finally, um, is there a reporting mechanism for the UN SDGs where you, your achievements can contribute to the reporting progress overall? No, not yet. I'm sorry, I have to say, no, not yet. It, it is linked, of course, with the United Nations Sustainable Goal. We are sharing our good practices, and uh, there are 
it probably will be possible to make that report. We just didn't have the time because we are growing so fast and uh, probably is also something we should take into consideration with our uh, international research. It is a very good point. Okay, well, someone has um, suggested that the SDG Action Manager is a useful way to monitor how well you are meeting each of the SDGs. So um, I've not heard of that. So thank you, Niall. So we can have a look at that and we can send yeah. you that. Thank you very Sarah. much. Very, very useful. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, to those that have joined later on, um, we did receive um, apologies, unfortunately, for the Organic for the Climate session. So Pariah is not going to actually be presenting on that. Um, rather than actually, um, we've, we've got no more questions. I think it's been an excellent session. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I think you've answered a lot more questions than, than other sessions. So thank you for being so patient. But rather than trying to, um, if there is other stuff, we would quite happy to hear it. But if people want to take an early break or if they want to go and watch a different marketplace, please feel free. Um, but unless there's anything extra, Sarah, you have to add, I can just thank you so much for your time. It is fascinating. And I think from the University of Plymouth SEI, we will certainly be in contact with you um, to see how we can link up with the initiatives we're doing here. Um, we don't have a geo food um, application yet, um, but now that we know about it, um, we will certainly be something that we'll be discussing with our Cornish partners and those in the geo parks elsewhere around the UK. You have uh, Mar Blanche, uh, UNESCO Global Geo Park, Mar Blanche, just, just asking for the membership. And uh, it will be the first one in UK and hopefully not the, not the last. So we are, we are going to exploit the, 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 the brand even there. And of course, the cooperation with the University of Plymouth will be, uh, we will be super pleased to have your cooperation and your support in developing further. Well, we will certainly be in contact, Sarah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you.